Gold Quest, Crypto Hack, Fishing Frenzy, and Pirate's Voyage are just a few of the 16 plus game modes that Blue Kid offers at the time of this recording. In this video, we're gonna break down every single game mode with some gameplay, suggestions, and tips to help you decide what your next game should be. Timestamps for each game mode can be found below. Let's start with a crowd favorite, Gold Quest. In this game, students race against each other to accumulate the most gold before time runs out or a gold amount set by the host is reached. Players answer questions to open chests that contain gold and other bonuses like 2 and 3x multipliers. But before you think this is just a recipe for your top performing students to compete while the rest of the class disengages, there are other things contained within chests. Players might open up a chest that causes them to lose gold. And the fun really starts when they open up a chest that allows them to steal or swap gold with another player. This not only makes for an exciting game right up until the last second, but this mechanic is an important aspect of many of our game modes, encouraging participation from all of the students throughout the entire game. This game requires speed and luck and can be played with as few as three players and up to 60 players on a free starter account, or up to 300 players for plus subscribers. Gold Quest also has a fun holiday variation called Candy Quest during Spooktober. Gold Quest can only be hosted, which means at the time of this recording, it can't be played solo or assigned as homework. The same thing is true of the next eight games, but don't worry, we'll talk about all the solo games too at the end. Now, if you want a competitive game that is great for older and younger players alike, we recommend Fishing Frenzy. Players cast out their lines and answer questions quickly to reel in the biggest fish in the sea. The player with the biggest haul by the end of the game wins. Players need speed to catch as much as possible, and as they answer more questions correctly, they have a chance to catch a lure upgrade, which allows them to catch rarer and heavier fish. If you've played the game, you know what I mean. Like Gold Quest, it's not all about speed. You need a little luck too. Like many of our games, students can also catch distractions, which affect other players in the game, giving them a chance to catch up. When you hear the class erupt, you'll know when a distraction has taken effect. We recommend playing with at least two students, but like Gold Quest, you can play with up to 60 students on a free starter plan or 300 if you're a plus subscriber. This game is very simple and can be grasped by younger students while still having enough variety for your older students to enjoy it too. Our next game has some of the best game music in our selection, in my opinion, and that game is Crypto Hack. It's a super secure and chaotic hacking game where players answer questions to mine crypto and hack fellow students. You need speed, insight, and a good memory to win this one. Players start the game by selecting a password and they answer questions to mine crypto and gain abilities. And just like Gold Quest, players have a chance to hack other students to steal crypto if they guess their password correctly. Hacked players not only lose their crypto, but they have to compete in a challenge to patch the breach and get back to hacking, giving other players a chance to catch up. If you want to strengthen your students' attentiveness, memories, and pattern recognition, then Crypto Hack is the right game to play. We suggest playing with at least three players, and again, you can play with up to 60 or 300 players depending on your account type. If you have a bit more time, we recommend playing for at least five to seven minutes to give players a chance to get through more questions in your set. Now, the newest game in the Blue Kit lineup includes a very different kind of thievery. Pirate's Voyage is played on the high seas where players answer questions to sail around the map, upgrading islands, scavenging shipwrecks, and collecting doubloons. Speed and accuracy will give you an advantage as you compete against fellow sailors. When a question is answered correctly, the players will roll the dice and move around the map. They might land on an island which they can settle and upgrade to earn doubloons, but they might also land themselves in jail. Like other games covered so far, a pirate's game wouldn't be complete without a few ship raids. When players land on a shipwreck, they have a chance to steal doubloons from other players. Because there's a fair bit of chance involved as you roll the dice, all players have a chance to win as long as they're answering questions correctly. Since this game mode is exclusive to plus subscribers, you can play with up to 300 players, and we recommend playing with at least three. Only the host needs a Bluekit Plus account to play this game, so if you're a teacher with Bluekit Plus, you should definitely give your students a chance to play in class. I'll include some more details about Bluekit Plus and all the additional features you get in the description below this video. Make sure you check that out when this is done. Let's get back to dry land and unearth our next game mode, Deceptive Dinos. Players compete against each other to excavate the most fossils before time runs out. Players get fossils in different ways. Every time a question is answered correctly, the student can either excavate or investigate. If you choose to excavate, you can select a rock to gain the fossils or bonuses within it. But if you want to risk it, you can cheat, which allows you to see what's inside the rocks before selecting one. But beware, if another player chooses to investigate you, they could catch you cheating and take some of your fossils. As you answer more questions, you discover rarer and more valuable fossils. The paleontologist with the most fossils at the end of the game wins. Players need speed and insight to win this game, and it makes for some great conversations and exciting competition within your class. 
There's a player limit of 60 or 300 for plus, and we recommend playing with at least three players. Now, up to this point, we've been talking about game modes where students compete individually, but the next two hostable live games on this list can be played as teams. Battle Royale is an intense elimination game where players face each other in a one versus one or team versus team showdown. This requires speed and accuracy since the player or team who answers the questions correctly first will win the battle, causing their opponent to lose an energy point. Players and teams who lose all their energy points will still be able to answer questions, but they won't be able to win. The player or team with the most energy at the end of the game wins. Hosts also have the ability to shuffle or manually create teams so you can ensure that they are evenly matched. The same player limit of 60 for starter or 300 for plus applies, but since it's an elimination game, we recommend playing with at least four players or 12 when you're playing with teams. Our other team game is Bluke Rush, a fast and strategical scramble. Players answer questions to take Blukes from other players or defend Blukes from being taken. It's similar to Battle Royale, but it takes a bit more strategy as players have to decide when to defend, when to attack, and who they are attacking. Since there's a bit more going on, it's really fun for students that want more strategy, and it adds another layer to the game for those that might not be as quick to the draw. The player limits are the same as the others, 60 and 300 for plus accounts. We recommend playing with at least four players or eight when playing with teams. The last two games on our list of modes that can only be played live are simpler, but just as fun. Racing is an exhilarating and suspense-filled game where players answer questions to race opponents and use power-ups to get to the finish line first. Players need speed and accuracy to win, but because there are power-ups, players who are falling behind are never out of the game or disengaged, as they could still have a chance to pull off a comeback. The game is limited to 60 players, but you can watch all of them racing to the finish line on the host screen, which makes for even more fun. We recommend playing with at least four players in this game. This is an excellent first game to try with your class since the mechanics are so simple and easy to understand. Classic, just as the name suggests, is a good old fashioned blue kit game. Players compete by answering questions quickly to earn points and climb the leaderboard. Players need speed and accuracy to win this one too because the more questions they answer correctly and the faster they answer them, the more points they get and because everyone is answering the same question at the same time, this is a great game mode to play if you want to ensure that all of your students have a chance to answer all of the same questions. And you can adjust your game settings to choose how many questions in your set you want them to answer. The player limit is 60 for free accounts and 300 for Blue Kit Plus subscribers. We recommend playing with at least four or more players. The games we've talked about so far can only be played live, but we have a number of games that can also be played solo or assigned as homework. The next five games can be played in any of those contexts. Tower Defense is an action-packed game full of defensive chaos. Players answer questions to buy and place towers to protect themselves from waves of evil blukes. This takes strategy and accuracy, and is great for students who want a bit more of an involved game. To win, you must inflict the most damage on evil blukes before time runs out, or be the first to meet the damage goal set by the host. Tower Defense 2 is a great evolution of this original game. Players can play on more maps and play at different difficulty levels as well as access more Bluk towers with unique abilities. This takes increased focus and strategy to survive. Because there are so many different maps and Bluk towers, this has a ton of replayability and variety. When hosting these games live, both versions have a player limit of 60 for starter plans or 300 for Blue Plus. We suggest playing with at least two players. You can play both Tower Defense and Tower Defense 2 solo or assign it as homework as well. And in this variant, players have a set amount of health, and as evil blukes slip through their defenses, they lose that health. The player who survives the most rounds wins. These are some of our most popular games for a reason, so definitely check them out. Factory is a fast-paced game where players quickly answer questions to unlock and upgrade blukes. Their goal is to earn as much cash as possible. This game takes a blend of speed and strategy. As players answer questions correctly, they unlock new blukes to add to their factory. Strategy comes into play as players decide which blukes to purchase, upgrade, or replace. Every bluke has different earning power, and your earnings are compounded as you have more blukes of that same class in your factory. It's a lot of fun and a lot to manage, requiring focus as students work to out-earn their classmates. Starter accounts can host games with up to 60 players and 300 players for plus subscribers. And don't forget, you can assign this as homework too. Cafe is another fun and fast-paced game where players play the role of a multitasking cafe server. Students answer questions to restock food, and as they're restocking this food, they must also serve that food to customers. As they serve more happy customers, they earn more money, which then allows them to upgrade their cafe, expand their cafe menu, and mess with their competition. 
This takes a lot of focus and speed to win. The player who keeps the cafe open and running for the most days or earns the most money wins. The same player limits apply and we recommend playing with two or more players. This is another favorite, so definitely check it out. If a busy cafe isn't fantastical enough for you, then you should try Monster Brawl. It's a survival game where players move around a map, collecting experience crystals while fighting off waves and waves of monsters. Players answer questions to level up their abilities in order to survive as long as possible. It takes skill and strategy to navigate the map and upgrade your defenses. This is a perfect blend between fast-paced action and thoughtful time for question answering. Players can choose their map and difficulty so the game will grow with them as they get better at it. And just like most of our games, you can play with up to 60 players for free or up to 300 for plus subscribers. Now the last two games we're gonna talk about today can be played solo, meaning they aren't for hosting live in class. They're self-paced and great for independent study in the classroom or to be assigned as homework. Crazy Kingdom is a hilarious game that takes serious strategy and accuracy. Players must keep the kingdom running by answering a variety of guest requests and manage limited resources to win. Every turn, students must answer a question from your set, then a guest will visit the kingdom with a request like this. Depending on whether the student answers yes or no, it will increase or decrease four different resources, materials, people, happiness, and gold. If a player answers questions from your set incorrectly, their response to the guest will be selected at random without their control. So the more questions they answer correctly, the better chance they have to survive 30 rounds, which is the default setting. When they run out of resources, the game is over. Tower of Doom is a light dungeon crawler slash deck builder game where players answer questions to battle evil blooks and climb the Tower of Doom to victory. The game starts with a chance to build their deck. As players answer questions correctly, they can choose one of three cards to add to their deck. These cards can be blooks, which are used in battle, or artifacts, which apply effects that help them during the game. Each bluke has three attributes, strength, charisma, and wisdom, and we'll talk about these in a bit when we get to battle. Once the players have answered questions and collected the cards, they can navigate through the map, taking actions like resting, visiting the shop, or facing evil blukes in battle. As players face a new evil bluke, they must answer a question correctly to choose the attribute they will use in that battle. If they answer incorrectly, the evil bluke will get to choose their attribute. The bluke whose attribute is highest will inflict damage on the other, so answering questions correctly is really important. Because of the game's complexity, it's great for students who love strategy, and it's best for larger question sets like definitions, facts, or review sets. Since you can use any combination of question set and game mode, there's so much to explore to keep your students engaged. To learn more about finding or creating question sets and hosting your first game, watch these videos over here. And for more in-depth game reviews, check out this playlist. And don't forget to subscribe because we'll be adding new videos for every new game mode that we release. We'll see you in the next one.